saying it was not necessary until two six-month monitoring periods had been conducted. In other words, they were willing to wait a year to see whether the water was safe. All the while, highly corrosive river water flowed through the city's lead pipes, leaching lead and other dangerous metals into the water supply. And what came out of the tap in many homes was toxic. <laughs> Almost immediately, residents started complaining. Their water was brown. Some people developed rashes, became sick. Early tests revealed fecal coliform bacteria. So the city and state officials added chlorine to the water supply and told people to boil their water. Both mistakes, which can actually increase the level of lead. <laughs> At city meetings, residents were repeatedly told the water was safe. We found the worst lead in water contamination that I have seen in 25 years. And believe me, I've seen a lot. Residents didn't find out about the lead until this man stepped in. Mark Edwards is a Virginia Tech researcher who tested the water early last year. It was very scary to see the levels of lead that were hazardous waste levels of lead coming out of her tap water. That's right. The lead levels in one home were so high, water from the tap could be considered hazardous waste. <laughs> His testing led to this EPA memo, an interim report, which was leaked last summer. It said the high levels of lead in the water were especially alarming because the state's water testing was flawed. So the true lead levels were probably much higher. <laughs> we were just waiting for the appropriate authorities to help Flint residents to enforce federal law. When Flint's former mayor asked the EPA for more information, he was shot down, as you can see in this email exchange obtained by CNN. The EPA regional director writes, the preliminary draft report should not have been released outside the agency, and that only when the report is revised and fully vetted will it be shared with the city. But that wouldn't happen until months later. Meanwhile, families were still drinking water poisoned with lead. The EPA blames the state, saying in a statement to CNN, what happened in Flint should not have happened, and that the EPA's ability to oversee was impacted by failures and resistance at the Let's state blame and local somebody level. Else. The state was continuing with its own mistakes, according to Mark Edwards, butchering a round of water testing. They not only tested the wrong homes, but altered the reports, <laughs> eliminating tests from two homes that would have shown toxic levels of lead. <laughs> The state says the changes were legitimate. They fabricated a report that made it appear like uh, Flint was passing the lead and copper rule with flying colors. In the fall, the government admitted that there was lead in the water and Flint was switched back to Detroit's water supply. But it wasn't until earlier this month that the state of Michigan started bringing in bottled water and declared a state of emergency. Right, isn't that insane? That's something else. We'll According watch. to the EPA, the average American. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so what? What? So what? It's lead. No worries, right? Uh, just lead. All right, so what do we got with the? What do we got with the lead? What's the problem? Well, the, you know, remember when we're talking about environmental problems like babies and old people. That's who get hurt a lot, okay? Because you're still developing or you're on your way out, right? And uh, things just don't work as good anymore, okay? But we've got IQ, behavioral changes, hearing problems, muscle weakness, kidney problems, abdominal pain, that was what that one picture was, uh, anemia, uh, uh, hypertension, lots of problems in children, again, learning difficulties, hearing loss, muscle weakness, vomiting, okay? Uh, in adults, we can see some problems for sure. Here's a big one, reduced sperm count, oh boy. Okay, numbness and tingling in the um, extremities. Think about pregnant women, could um, cause a miscarriage. Again, mental issues, okay? We, uh, even in pets too, your pets. Uh, could make them go blind, diarrhea, seizures. Okay, so uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Um, these foods may help protect you and your family. 
okay. Um, eating healthy snacks might help with some of these things. Got some iron, zinc, vitamin D, but again, it's no end all be all. I want to talk a little bit about Legionnaire's disease too. Mentioned it the other day when we were talking a little bit about the E. coli in, uh, in the lettuce. There was also an increased number in Legionnaire's disease cases when that was changing. Some of the same thing, but uh, fever would go with this. So more of like something like, uh, like maybe it's a flu sort of thing. Uh, but this is because of this bacteria that existed, okay? And if you look at the cases here around Flint, incredibly huge amounts compared with the rest of other places in Michigan. You can see those things jumping after it switched its water supply, okay? And then boom, once it switched back down. So a lot of problems, okay? can't see lead, you can't, you can't boil lead out of there, okay? Um, you're like, lead itself won't change the color. There was a lot of other stuff going on, right? In, to cause that brown color in that, um, in that water, okay? Um, so, you know, what can we do? We can filter our water, unfiltered water for mopping floors and washing clothes. But you gotta also remember that, like you may not be drinking lead, where else in your house could lead get into hey. your body? Hey. No, no. Hey. The shower, baby. What? You don't think about it. Your skin protects you from a lot of stuff, but your skin absorbs things. Your shower can be incredibly dangerous, which is crazy to think about. But you don't think about that, right? You're not drinking. Maybe you are drinking it. Right? Uh, you brush your teeth. Anybody brush your teeth in the shower? I know some people do that. Some people actually say that's a good water time and saves water, right? You don't have to turn the sink on. You're right there. You're brushing your teeth in the shower. Wait, is your mind blown? Did you think you've never thought about no. brushing your teeth in the shower? No. Oh, yeah. I don't do it, but I thought about starting. I just pee in the shower every day. Why not? Right, right there. I'll go to the same spot. Huh? As soon as you get any paint, yeah. Is it a water thing? I think it is. I think it is too. Sometimes I turn on the sink and I have to pee. Anybody else with me here? If you're doing dishes, you're like, oh God, I gotta pee. Yeah, I just didn't once. I won't name names, Hannah Little. He said, like, when she pumped gas, have I told you this story before? She has to pee. Like, so she said, like, at her house, because she lives on a farm, they use the gas there, you know, on the farm. Okay. Yeah, right. And she's like, oh God. So she pees. I'm like, what if we go on like a trip, a road trip? She's like, I don't want to go on a trip. <laughs> okay, there you go. So uh, here we go. So I told you all those things. This comes from uh, our town. Okay, so what do we got in our town? They release this every year. This is the one I can find on the internet. Uh, but uh, if you look at this sort of stuff, we can look at what we've got arsenic is in our water copper we got some fluoride we do we do not add fluoride to our water okay dentists are angry about that but uh, but uh, we don't do it because some there was a study done by a manchester university professor like back in the 60s and said we shouldn't do it because of this environmental damage i don't know i need to, i think we need to go back and relook at that but I know a certain dentist that's like, we need to change that. Don't want to name names, but all right. So uh, all these things, but look at this. So this is right here from our water, okay? And does it violate, okay? Notice we sample these things here. We detected it, but it still meets the level. They're not in violation. So we do have arsenic in our water. We have copper. We do have some fluoride, some nickel, nickel lead, okay? But it doesn't violate that. So we have these maximum containment levels, which say like, okay, let's go ahead and allow some in because sometimes it's unavoidable. Where's arsenic coming from? Erosion of soil, okay? Where's copper coming from? Pipes, copper piping, right? What about fluoride? Natural deposits, lead, pipes. Nickel, soil, nitrate, runoff, 
sodium runoff. Okay, we can't avoid that. There it is. But look at this, trihalomethanes. Okay, we put them in there. We just make sure they're not getting out of the plane. Okay, chlorine residue, we got some of that stuff. Okay, we've got to stay within this maximum containment level. Okay, all of these things, we're trying to control microbes. We got to disinfect the water if you want to drink it. Okay, does that mean out in the country you shouldn't have these things? Okay. Yeah, uh, that's just the way it is. You're still, you're, you're getting higher levels of all these things. I don't know. It'd be fun to kind of test your well water and see if you are over the maximum containment levels. I don't know of anyone of a study. This would be interesting to look up. Is there a study of someone who has gotten cancer, cancer rates of well water drinkers in the United States? Addison, Google that for me, will you? Can you? Uh, only because I see your fingers moving. Cancer levels of well water. You may put in quote, country bumpkin folk. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Just, kidding. just trying to get you guys. All right, okay, here we go. All right. Oh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. You know about the last cold storage. Cold storage. It's cold. No, there was a few people at Indian Ridge that wouldn't give this back. Oh, yeah, I, didn't know. I was so mad. I started this a long time ago. This jungle. So this jungle. I, yeah, yeah. So this is my writing. So the idea here is that um, the current leader of the jungle oh, gets this. Right. You, yeah, you got to write your note in here, girl. Yeah, and so that. I started this because I used to run the jungle and then I, I got married and had kids and I had to quit. And so um, I thought, huh? It would have been good at it. We shouldn't have oh man, it was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I loved it. I got, I got yelling at this. Uh, but uh, yeah, to quit. So then my idea was that we would start this jungle playbook and it would be passed on. And then on my deathbed, yeah, yeah. someone could bring it to me and I could read through the memories. That's okay. It's just part of it, man. No, no, no. It's that, that's, per that's perfect. I want it to be used and abused, man. You know, but like you got to write some new chants in there too. Like that's the goal. It's like a, it's like a living document, right? You continue to build it over time. Like, there's cheers in there that I get. I, bet, I guarantee you guys didn't use this year. We didn't do anything in it. Oh, whoa. Oh. There's some. Don't write one in the chance. Oh. Oh. One of my favorites was um, it was from a Bud Light commercial. Tailgate tested, tailgate approved. Do you guys know I, I originated, actually, even went to a conference and presented the mock the coach? That was. I, I started that. That's awesome. That's insane. I started that. I went yeah, to a conference like and like it was an IHSA conference and like um, all these kids came to my session. It was really fun. I was like, you want to stir things up? Mop the coach. And they were all like, yeah, it was so much fun. Like I had people afterwards like asking me for tip. It was just, I felt famous. It was cool. All right. All right. So here's the problem. It's all about risk, right? Did you guys, have you guys taken any risks today? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's the biggest risk of your life right now. Driving to school is the, the highest risk. We're freaked out, yes, about COVID. We're freaked out about, you know, masks up. Look, I'm a masker, you know, like I got my on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna obey the rules. I got the vaccine, I get this. But the most dangerous thing we all did today was drive to school, okay? And if you had more of a, of a drive than like two minutes, your risk is higher. Yeah, we don't think about it, right? We don't think about that, that aspect until, you know, we have a tragic accident and we think about it going down and taking care of it, right? You know, these, those things that shakes us up. But every dang day we get up and we drive to school and we don't even sometimes put our seatbelts on and we're texting and we're like we're fiddling with shit. And then next thing you know, like that's it right? That's the most dangerous thing we, we do. 
okay? Lead in our water, yes, is incredibly dangerous too, but there's always got to be that risk. So this is what we have to look at, okay? Are we looking at like things that are, are happening like acute, like something like immediate? We're looking at something that's like a long-term problem, right? The problem with my lead in my water, okay, at my house is that it's really low. It meets the, it meets all the requirements. Is it right that I have lead in my water? No, okay, but that's the way it goes. Should I accept that? I don't know. I deal with that, okay? I deal with it, and sometimes I, when I'm teaching this, I think like, shit, I should probably redo all my piping, okay? But you got to think about yourself, like, what, it, what are we doing? Are we controlling something for long term? Okay. Are we looking at, like, what are all of these factors that ultimately create a balance of safe water? Okay. You got to look at, like, the regulations, the engineering, the piping. We got to look at microbiology. Okay. We got to look at toxicity. I found this chart and I, I really kind of like that because it really is a balancing act. Okay, so all of these things, of course, are bad. Lead, neurotoxin, arsenic, cancer, mercury, um, uh, neurotoxin, okay? Pesticides, acid can affect hormones and all kinds of other things. Okay, what's that? We'll come back to it. Look at this, arsenic's everywhere, right? Right. Well water. Did you find anything, Addison? Okay. Cool. We see that. Thanks, All right. Why does Asia, Asia, why does Asia have the highest amount of mercury? It's a fish. Nice guess. It's huge. Definitely, that's a factor. But so, something else. No, 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 nothing political. What, where's our mercury coming from? No. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, that's definitely coming from old thermometers, but it's not like Asia's like got tons of old thermometers. It's something that's in this room and it's something that I talk about all the freaking time. Cool. Cool. Right? So you burn coal, it releases mercury. Why Asia? They burn so much coal, right? They, they, they've got almost 2 million people, right? And in Asia, they're burning coal for their electricity. They don't have the same regulations. Ours are lower because we control the amount of mercury that we release, okay? Okay, it's all about that Clean Air Act and protecting that, okay? So Asia, huge mercury, okay? We talked a little bit about pharmaceuticals um, and, uh, the other day, okay? Oil pollution is definitely something that we could find in the water. Now, now look, I, I waited for you guys, so I got to tell you a little bit about this. Um, so there was a question that somebody wrote about this chapter uh, or about this chart. And this was when I was working on my questions the other day. And I looked at this chart and I was like, next thing I know, two hours later and lots of documents later, I was like, I should not have spent this much time on this one question. But I really, really wanted to know because I didn't understand it, okay? Like, so here I've got A, A is contamination in the ocean of oil, here's worldwide. We got nat natural seep, so oil's naturally coming from the ocean bottom, okay? Then we've got extraction, so like think deep uh, horizon, okay? The BP oil spill, right? Then we got transportation, okay, of petroleum. And then we get this weird thing like consumption of petroleum. How does me consuming oil get into the water, right? Like I'm, you, no, I'm not drinking oil, okay? Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to, I'm just going to show you my, um, uh, email to my boss because it's long and I just want to show you. All right. All right. So here it is. 
All right, so my boss, her name is Yolanda. She's great. So here's the, can I just read this to you? Yeah. All right, so I said, this is, I hope you're doing great. Are you seeing green on the trees where you are? Okay, blah, blah, blah. This is not a pressing issue, but I wanted to email you about a thought. I don't know if you have a Freeland fourth edition ideas file. If so, here's something you could put into that file for later. I'm currently working on the feedback and hints for chapter 14. This question came up. Globally, where do 47% of marine oil spills come from? Okay, A, catastrophic oil spills uh, from tankers transporting oil to refineries, tanker and pipeline spills, oil exploration, natural seeps, uh, or E, oil extraction. Okay, someone else wrote the question in the content. I want to dig deeper, so I, I too looked closely at figure 43.2. This figure explains where all the oil in the ocean comes from. The pie chart listed, quote, consumption of petroleum 38%. I began to wonder what consumption of petroleum meant. I thought, how the heck does the petroleum I consume end up in the ocean? If it was a small number, I probably would have overlooked it, but 38%, that's huge. I couldn't find anything in the Freeland text that explained consumption of petroleum, so I did some digging. I first went to the link under the chart that took me to this link. They took me to this document, which was a hella huge document. Uh, I eventually found that consumption of petroleum means this, significant petroleum hydrocarbon inputs into the ocean related to the consumption of petroleum include river and urban runoff, oil spills from cargo ships, operational discharges from commercial vessels and recreational craft, and atmospheric deposition of petroleum hydrocarbons. What the heck? That's a giant chunk of a lot of things, right? Okay, the thing that you might be familiar with is this discharge from commercial vessels and recreational craft. How does recreational craft spill oil into the water? Yeah, the exhaust, right? Or some leakiness. I've done it. I'm, I've been on a jet ski before, and all of a sudden I look behind me and I see like that film on top of the water, right? Where, what is it? That's gas coming out of that recreational vehicle. Somebody pumps, uh, puts gas into a boat, spills some in the water, and no worries, right? But it all adds up. That's a giant, that's a giant percent right there. Okay. 33%. But but you gotta know this that most of the oil in the ocean is not coming from Exxon Valdez. It's not coming from BP oil spills from natural natural seeps, okay, that are coming from the ocean floor. Okay, but the Exxon Valdez is like a big deal. Okay, right? Okay. Uh, but of course the BP oil spills are uh, hell of hell a lot. They took they took years. The, um, the fishing industry in Alaska. So I told you about my Alaska trip, right? Yeah. 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 So I went up there and, uh, and uh, it was the year after the Exxon Valdez spill. And uh, it was, they were still cleaning up. It was crazy. Birds, you know, you've seen all this stuff. And uh, over time, what happens is hopefully it, it gets cleaned up, but we're still finding oil uh, from that spill in, in Alaska. We're still finding oil in the spill uh, in the Gulf. And those of you who've been to like Florabama, Gulf Shores, that Orange Beach, you've seen some of the effects of some of these things. All right, we're almost done here. Thanks for sticking with me. Okay, we can do some things to remediate it. We can use booms to try to clean up the floating oil. There are uh, these dispersants and that's what we use for the BP oil spill. So we put these dispersants and everyone's like, oh, we can't find the oil. Okay, but it's still washing up in these tiny little beads, like on beaches. We find it in weird spots on the bottom of the ocean. Okay, um, there are bacteria that will eat it, but we have not found, or we've not, some people claim that they've found ways to remediate oil, but we've not used those um, commercially. Okay, last but not least, the fracking industry. We've talked about this, we watch clips from Gasland fracking can pollute your water. Why secret sauce there? 
Yeah, nobody knows what those chemicals are that end up killing, uh, end up. Uh, I don't know uh, like Ohio in the corner. Uh-huh. Yeah, I yeah. know what they are. Yeah. You know what they are? Wait, Ohio in the corner? Is that what you This is Ohio. Oh, I see it. Yeah. I like this, so. We can tell you what's in it, but then we'd have to let it kill you. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk. This is, uh, uh, I got, I got uh, a couple more slides. Uh, okay, so other water pollutants, of course, garbage, sediment, we've talked about that, thermal pollution, noise pollution. What's something that could be affected by noise pollution in the ocean? Yeah, what wildlife? Whales, right? Okay, because they use echolocation, they use sonar, right? Okay, that's so, so not echolocation, sonar to uh, to speak to each other. If And the Navy gets in trouble a lot for this because they test like all kinds of like things under the water with their submarines and they think it's messing with the uh, whales. Some, some think that noise pollution is the reason why whales beach themselves. Clean Water Act, 1972. Again, only make sure that things are fishable and swimmable. This is not drinking water. Clean Water Act, only water for wa fishable and swimmable. Not saying that we're gonna drink that. That's huge. The Safe Drinking Water Act, that's the one that establishes those maximum containment levels to make sure that we want to make that they're not in the water and they're not going to hurt us, but we allow just a little bit. We've already kind of talked about this. There's my New York City water system. Look at this water system. It's crazy, right out of the Cascades or Catskills. I said Cascades, Catskill Mountains. These aqueducts come from the mountains right down in man. So that's through tunnels, right? Through tunnels. It's pretty amazing. Look at this. So how far do they have to put, how far This is it. This is where, this is crazy, right? They're shooting water. Uh, what's the mileage there? I don't know, man. We could, we could do that. I mean, it's pretty big, right? If this is New York, right? And we're up here and here's Pennsylvania. Okay. We're up here in, in Delaware. That's, that's quite a, quite a trip, right? But there's an aqueduct underground. Okay. It goes all the way to New York City. Pretty cool. We talked about these things. All right, that's it. Thanks for sticking with me. David, you know yeah. Ali Kaufman and like I know that. Huh? Who's that? Who is that? I don't know that name. He's he's a, the the mm. roommate of uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah 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 yeah. Um, they were in Florida and. Oh, it's a dolphin. I'm going to put the shark. Did you write a thing or no? Yes. Thank you. My baby's back. Whoa. All right.